in the last final surge to get out of there before the communists took over. And uh, she uh, made it to the United States and they met. He uh, has a law firm down in Southeast Asia, and he and her now are going to go back. Vietnam is, uh, it's not really free, it's still a, a country, but they're not fighting anymore. They, somewhere, somehow, uh, whatever happened there uh, during that time in the 60s, and uh, in Vietnam, the 60s and 70s, they ended up learning something as well. And, um, so I think, I think there are similarities to what's going on here. In the first raid, land-based planes were forced back by the weather, but the carrier jets completed their strike with the loss of one American plane. Later, photo reconnaissance flights proved that much of the staging area had been completely destroyed. The confrontation between the Reds and the West was the most critical since the Gulf of Tonkin incident last summer, when the U.S. replied just as swiftly to North Vietnam PT boat attacks. The second raid came the next day, when the South Vietnamese pilots struck anew at bases across the border. Here again, a successful mission was carried out as the Red Communication Center at Vinh Linh was bombed and strafed. Both Babe Ping and Moscow were slow to comment on these retaliatory raids. Finally, they both promised to back the North Vietnamese regime. Asian reaction, however, was that the two Red Powers had lost face in the East-West showdown. To bolster defenses in South Vietnam, a Hawk ground-to-air missile unit has gone on duty. The United States today, when a ship goes to sea, the United States today makes darn sure that they are in foreign countries every couple weeks. And we did the same thing. When we pulled into a foreign port, one of our jobs during that foreign port was to go out and rehabilitate uh, uh, homes for, um, for uh, kids without any. I mean, uh, what do you call them? Uh, ding. Uh, <laughs> but uh, orphans, orphanages. They go out and, uh, and they paint, they fix up, they do plumbing work, they do the whole thing. And the United States has done that all the time. Uh, it doesn't cost the orphanage a dime. They get off and you, you have, each, each group has their day, so to speak, in a foreign port to go out and, and make things happen. And to hand kids candy bars, to talk to kids, to talk to adults, to talk to the people that are there, to give them the idea that we're not here to take your land, take your property. We're here to help. And uh, that's what that's what our military has been about forever. I don't care if it's Navy, Air Force, Army, Marine Corps, uh, you know, they're always around. I believe most members in the military are very supportive of what we have done in Iraq. There are always exceptions, right? You got 165,000 people mm -hmm. there at one time, you're gonna find the exceptions. But the general feeling was that yes, we're doing good, Yes, we're helping the local people, and yes, we're spreading democracy and freedom. So, you know, overall, absolutely. Has it been a success? Slow. I mean, everybody that was, has been over there has been frustrated at the slow pace of victory or success, but it's happened, and it's still happening. So yeah, frustrated at the slow pace, but happy about the fact that yes, we're moving in the right direction, and things have definitely gotten better. Has the military made Iraq a better country now than when Saddam Hussein was in power? That's what they're telling us, that, uh, that Iraq is, uh, that we're ready to, to basically uh, move out. We're not going to move out everybody all at once. It's going to be kind of a uh, Korea-type atmosphere where uh, uh, the United States will be there close at hand if they need us. I think that's going to be around for a lot longer than I'll be alive, but it, it, uh, uh, they're going to be there. Somebody's going to be there. But I think, I think if you could ask the general population of Iraq what they think of today, uh, uh, they would, they would uh, take what they have in Iraq today versus what they had in Iraq with Saddam Hussein. 
I, I've been in I've been in every continent in the United in the world except uh, Antarctica. Uh, I've been in 12 coastal countries in Africa, Pakistan, Australia, New Zealand, Argentina, Uruguay, Brazil, and in the islands in the Caribbean umpteen times plus all of Europe. And we don't know. Uh, the, the average person in the United States, the average person in this school, and I will, for the most part, include adults, uh, don't understand how other people live. How other people go for days, weeks, and months with just bits to eat or nothing at all. And that they, you know, and if we weren't, yeah, and if we weren't around to make sure, or try to make sure that didn't happen, this world will be a whole different place than it is today. We definitely want to get out of Iraq. I mean, the, Iraq's a success story because we're turning Iraq back over to the Iraqis. Right now, there's a functioning democratic government in Iraq. Yeah, it's struggling. Well, the U.S. government struggled at first, too. But it's functioning. Right now, there's a functioning Iraqi army and a functioning Iraqi police force. They have the lead. The U.S. has drawn down. We had 165,000 troops there during the surge, which I was part of. We're down to about 49,000 today. We have the Iraqis back now. They are in the lead. We're there in a support role. We need to continue to draw down, but we need to do it carefully, not on any kind of timetable. We need to do it as the Iraqi army and police show that they can take over. It's critical that we don't let Iraq slide backwards. We've lost 4,400 plus American lives in Iraq. We've spent billions of dollars there. We need to keep the gains that we've enabled that country to make. We've got a friend in Iraq now. Right? They may not be our best friend in the world, but they certainly are pro-US now. Big difference than in 2003. So yes, we need to withdraw but slowly and carefully, and only as the Iraqis demonstrate their ability to take over. Brings me to my final question of the evening, uh, kind of controversial. Uh, do you think the U.S. should uh, remain in Iraq or withdraw? Well, I think they're like I said earlier. I think I think they're gonna they're gonna withdraw the troops and pull them all back to uh, outside the. Uh, outside the uh, boundaries of Iraq. Uh, they're going to go into, into uh, Kuwait uh, and sit there. And they will, con they will escort convoys and stuff of oil trucks and all that kind of stuff to and from uh, Baghdad for a while. And then they'll turn that all over to their army and let them do that same thing. Uh, I think that we will be in presence if it's sitting in Kuwait, if it's sitting in uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, if it's sitting in uh, some other country, completely away from uh, from Iraq, I think they'll do the same thing in Af in Afghanistan. I believe, in my head, that if we hadn't had American soldiers, sailors, Air Force, and Marines in Korea, we would have been back in Korea fighting a long, long time ago. Uh, I think the same thing with uh, uh, Vietnam knows how we are, uh, but I don't think I don't think you'll ever see that one happening again. Um, there's uh, you go to Europe uh, when you when we get off the ship in foreign ports. I mean, kids and people were coming to us all the time. You know, help me do this, do that, food, 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 all the time didn't make any difference and that's that's what it's really all about is teaching and uh, letting people know that we are friends not enemies and uh, it's uh, it's amazing you you can sit here and you can see it on video screens you can see it all over but until you see it in real life and uh, go to Haiti you want to you want to see something crazy go to Haiti Know, they they uh, had the earthquakes and uh, those poor people won't be out of that. The United States is down there all the time, and and uh, we didn't need to be there. 
But we were. But we were. And uh, the uh, and you know it's it's all about it's all about uh, belief and what you believe in and how you believe in it. Uh, and uh, I think uh, it makes a whole and how you're bunch taught. Of difference. Yep. Yep. And you know another thing is is when I went in the Navy in 1961. Uh, well, 60 and uh, in December, but uh, I went in because I was because uh, it was either enlist in the Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, or the Coast Guard, or go in or be drafted into the United States Army. And uh, I decided it was nicer sleeping on a dry mattress in a ship than it was sleeping in a wet sleeping bag in the middle of a jungle somewhere in, in the army or in a foxhole but it's uh, you know there's and uh, the uh, uh, people they took they took the draft away I'm not I know why they did it but I and I'm not so sure that it was the right thing to do in my mind but I know what it did for me and it made me uh, what I saw and did made me one heck of a better person today uh, because of uh, what I got to see and uh, I finding out how the rest of the world lives. There isn't, there isn't a slum bad enough in this world, in, I should say in the United States, to even compare with medium slums over the rest of the world. We cannot simply leave Iraq in chaos after we have created the chaos.